welcome to Amber and Black. It's crunch time in Division 2 at the Abbey Stadium tonight as Colchester comes to play the U's. We're just hovering above the relegation zone and we don't want to have to play for points when we go away to Swansea. Coming up in the show, we've got all the interviews from the fans forum and we've also got all the action here from the Abbey Stadium tonight, including Player of the Year's awards from the Cambridge Evening News and the website. But first of all, let's go to the action against Colchester where three points are compulsory. <laughs> Well, we've had the first presentation of the evening and it's for the away travel fans and have been applauded by the players of the club on the pitch for a change which is a reversal of roles and it's about time and all and what you're seeing here is all of these fans here have you all done 50 percent is that right 50 percent yeah we've all done over 3,000 miles over 3,000 miles over six over six thousand and where would you say is your best trip as a coach that you've all been um, Notts County, Notts County. Like the Notts County ground is nice. Um, it was nice to go to Morecambe, although the result was terrible down by the seaside. No, they've all been good. Yeah, they've all been good. And let's hope we can carry on going to the Division Two grounds this season. Well, I'm sure we're all here hope for that this evening. There we go. The away travel fans. What was your name? Mikey. Mikey. And do you go to all of the games, Mikey? Yeah. Right. What's your favourite game you've been to so far? Probably Notts County as a. Notts County. So what's it like feeling like being clapped on the pitch by the players for a change? Uh, it's like I hope to be doing it, like playing. So you one day want to be running out onto the Abbey even though, so that we're all applauding you. Well, you've made a good start here tonight, Mikey. Well done. Um, do you reckon we'll be in Division 2 then? Yeah. Well, that's good enough for me, Mikey. Well done. There we go. The away travel fans. <laughs> Mikey. Mikey. Don't forget it. You saw him here first. Cambridge Red. Amber and Black. <laughs> As it's the last home game of the season, we've got the presentation for the Players of the Years, and this is Cambridge, United, Cambridge Evening News' Player of the Year, and the one and only Mr Paul Wanless. <laughs> and then we also have Paul Wanless receiving the Player of the Year award, presented to him by Terry Wilby, and that's from the Usenet, which is the, uh, the unofficial website. And it uh, features quite a lot, and a lot of chat on there. If you're ever looking for somewhere to surf on the web, have a look at the Usenet message board. You always find something interesting on a daily basis. And we've got the Young Player of the Year Award, Usenet's Young Player of the Year Award, awarded to Tom Youngs. On your left, you've got Will Jones. You'll see his articles in the Town Crier. And on the right, you've got Andrea Thrussell, who's the lady that man manages the Usenet website and does it with a masterly class. Tom Youngs, Young Player of the Year. This is Radio Cambridge's Player of the Year, presented by Mr Andy Harper, BBC Radio Cambridge's Andy Harper, to Mr Tom Youngs again. Excellent stuff, Tom. So, just a quick hello to Tom here to see that he's unfortunately not able to play today, injured, unfortunately, which is a shame for us all, and especially for himself. But, Tom, how do you feel about winning these awards this evening? Um, yeah, obviously, I'm really happy to win the awards. Proud, and I appreciate appreciate that from the fans. I'm just really gutted that I can't be playing tonight. You know, yeah, we feel it's your game. Yeah. Right. What do you think is going to happen, Tom? Uh, we're definitely going to win tonight. I can, I can feel it. I'm very confident. And uh, that will leave it in our hands on Saturday at Swansea. Right, well, we'll be there to see that, Tom. Andy, was you surprised that someone like Tom Young's got that sort of award from the uh, BBC Radio Cambridge reviewers? No, I wasn't. Listeners, I should say, listeners. No, I wasn't surprised, really, because, you know, the voting had been going on all throughout the season. I must say that Neil Musto was definitely the early pace setter. He, and dare I mention it, Zima Abbey. But uh, Musto, throughout the season, in the early part, certainly was picking up the votes, but obviously he's been out of the team. Paul Wanless has made a really late charge. I mean, he got four votes last Saturday. But it wasn't quite enough because Tom has been, you know, set in the pace really he's been so consistent so in a way it wasn't a surprise because I knew what people were saying but I think it's great that it's one of the young men who've come through the club um, Mildenhall's finest and I just hope that we'll be able to watch Tom Young's in the second division next year we all think the same of that Andy Andy I've listened to your show regular and you've had a good build up to tonight's game but now we're really here what do you really feel what's your gut feeling Andy come on give it to us straight I can't really say what a gut feeling is I just say what I desperately want to happen I mean you know Colchester a better side I think than their league position suggests and they, when you see they've got people like McGavin and McLeish on the bench they've got goal power but United tend to beat Colchester here and it's just that they must beat them tonight I mean 
my gut feeling says that they just got to. I just don't want to be looking at third division football next season. Right, we've managed to catch a quick one with Reg before all the excitement begins. That was the, uh, is that the third or fourth box we've just done? Uh, the third box we sold. The third box that's gone to the supporters club. Yeah. How do you feel about it, Reg? Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I hope we get some more punters come along and help us out. Do the, it, what, the, for what you explained at the fans forum, it's definitely a good deal. Um, the fans of the supporters club themselves, they're looking to use the thing. How many can actually fit in there, Reg? There's 10 people that can be fitted into the box, but they've also got 10 seats on the outside of the box to get to continue to get the atmosphere. Like, like the terrace, like a terrace. Yeah, like Excellent the terrace. stuff. Yeah. So, it's been a good night for the club. How are you feeling about the actual game we were just about to enter into, Reg? Very, very nervous. Very yeah. nervous. I think any chairman would be at this yeah. stage of the season. Reg, good luck for tonight, yeah. and we'll see you later on. Here we go, then. This is where it really counts. The last home game of the season. Paul Wanderlust leading the team out. Lionel Paul is in goal. Terry Fleming, Mark Joseph, Andrew Duncan, Christian Hansen, Terry Pilvey, Ian Ashby, Tom Cairns, Alex Rebel, Dave Kitson. And in reserve, we've got Sean Marshall, John Dreyer, Richard Prokas, Omar Rizza, and Marcus Richardson. <laughs> Right, we've just had our own exclusive, exclusive live performance by Blade and Lex here of their very new, is it your brand new single? Yeah, coming out on May the 14th. It's called You Don't See the Signs. And uh, what's one for you? Because I'm a DJ, you know that, didn't you? You knew that, Blade. Now, we'll play this at special times at Cambridge United there. Excellent. What, and how did you end up being here today? Well, it turns out that Cambridge were kind of in the relegation zone and everything. So, you know, they came to a show that we did with another group called Feeder, who I'm sure you've heard of. Um, and basically, they were impressed with the track that you just heard. And they thought that this was going to kind of help them get out of the relegation zone. So they asked us to come on and perform and use our track as their thing. Really? So we were, like, honoured and we decided to be here and do our thing. Well, I'll tell you what, it takes a lot of guts. If you know that, Blake, you've come out and done the business here today. Thanks a lot. And, uh, but uh, I'll tell you something else. We couldn't hear the music out there. <laughs> That's hard work, boys. Yeah, well, no, it was all right, though, man. The only thing I'm, I'm, I'm screwing about is that I didn't get a long sleeve shirt. <laughs> like, that, in fact, that is a long sleeve shirt. <laughs> <laughs> to the U's as Hamptons get there in the end. It looks like Division 2 survival is done and finished. Still got to rely on other results. Bristol Rovers tomorrow night. And what happens to others in Swansea, but it looks as though we've done the trick. And we're going to catch some of the players in the bar and all the excitement of the after the game. Juventus kick like that was an awesome try, wasn't it? Ah, it's worth a try, you never know, dear. You've you got to try. Bit of a struggle, but we got there in the end. Oh, we just thoroughly deserved it. Lads were magnificent tonight, absolutely magnificent. Paul! Quick ball deal, Paul. A struggle, right. a struggle, but we got there. Ah, uh, it was a scrap, but the fans were brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> right. Bleep, beat, the fans were brilliant. Excellent. They were brilliant, they just Job done, Paul. Come on. Bit of a struggle, Terry, we got there in the end, how are you feeling? Yeah, it's good to get the result. We badly needed the three points, as we know. Um, hopefully, the results go for us tomorrow. And um, we still ain't over yet. We still got to go to Swansea away and, and get something from there as well. So it was important to get the three points today. I thought the lads did well as a team today. Yeah, we, we really battled for each other today, and that's what we needed. Um, we knew it was going to be a scrappy game, and it's unfortunate we couldn't pr pr produce um, a better performance for the fans. But it was just. Um, well done that we got for the three points. 
Excellent. Well, we're back now. I reckon we'll be here for next season anyway, Terry. And it'll be nice to have you on that pitch again. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, hopefully we will be like, so just roll on, hopefully get a result on Saturday, and we will be, yeah, definitely. Well, we'll be there soon you Saturday. Go and take your applause. It's well earned. It's well earned, Terry. Come to the last home game of the season so we can bring this man on. This is Leach who does all the announcing. How are you feeling, Leach, at this moment in time? I'm, I'm blinding, actually, at the moment. Yeah, so long as everything goes right tomorrow night, it could be all finished before Saturday. That'd be lovely. Are you looking forward to a three months rest now, get your voice back for the summer? Yeah, yeah, I am. I am, actually. But uh, I'm going to miss all this. I don't know if I'll be able to do this next season. I've got to move away, so I might be... Uh, so this could be your last... could be my last time on the, uh, on the hallowed turf, yeah. Well, so, well, you heard it here first on Amber and Black. This is Leach's last possible performance. We've enjoyed hearing his voice and giving us all a team. And we're going to miss you. Good luck, Leach. I miss you too. <laughs> OK, well, we're on the after-match interviews here now, and I've just managed to find Graham Nurse, who's a gentleman who I have some nice banter with on the Usenet website. But it's just informed me of some hard work he's putting into this new book that he's putting together. So, Graham, just tell us a little bit about this book. Well, it all uh, started about a year ago when Brian Atwood, the uh, uh, Cusa uh, 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 chairman, isn't he? Chairman, yeah, yeah. yeah I've forgotten what he was. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's nice to find Graham speechless for once. He's never <laughs> usually speechless. And, uh, no, anyway, uh, Brian was contacted and um, Brian was put on to me because everybody knows that I do quite a bit of writing and I've also got all the records of, of the games and so forth. And we've been commissioned to produce a photographic history of the whole of Cambridge United right back from the from the earliest the days. It was called Abbey United. Oh, yes, yes. And we, that is, this is part of a series. The, the um, books are being produced uh, for a number of football clubs, for county cricket clubs, and they're produced as a series. And we've uh, decided that what we will do is all the books that we sell, all the profits will be going direct to the club. So there's not a penny being made by anybody. And this has helped because it's meant that a lot of people have given us a lot of valuable stuff uh, uh, photographs, uh, their old programs, stuff that uh, they've collected over many years for us to actually use in the book, which is great. Excellent. So when's the book due to be released, Graham? Well, we're on the last legs now. We've, by the end of May, we're looking to actually take them to the publishers, and the publishers themselves are hoping to get it on the shelves for the 50th anniversary. So around about the end of August, beginning of September, we're hoping the book will be published. And how much would that sell for around? A rough, any rough idea? Yes, we know exactly how much it's going to be. It's, going to, <laughs> it's going to be £9.99, and uh, perhaps everyone can give the odd penny to the uh, uh, CFU Every Penny Counts campaign. <laughs> <laughs> and the club will be making a very nice cut off of it. We're going to put it on sale uh, in the club shop. It will be also on sale in the supporters club. Uh, we're hoping we may be able to get it in Sainsbury's and places like this as well. On top of that, we're going to be holding signing sessions uh, so people can actually come to us and get uh, signed copies as well. OK, viewers, managed to get hold of Tom Cowan, who happened to be the man of the match tonight. A well-deserved reward as well. Tom, how do you reckon it finished? Well, now, now the, the pressure's off. What do you feel? Oh, we don't think the pressure is off, is it? Do you not think so? No, in Bristol Rovers, and you lose tomorrow night, then the pressure will be off. Um, no, we enjoyed the game. It was uh, must have been opened out, and we played a bit of football for a change um, in the second half. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, set up the first one, got the second one. It was, it was a pleasing day for us. And what about the actual first half tonight? It was a bit of a struggle, weren't it? Yeah, I think um, nerves got the better of everyone. Um, they, they've got nothing to lose, have they? They get the ball down, start passing it, things like that. We're a bit nervous, try to do their jobs properly. <clears throat> it's not quite coming off for us. But the second half, we loosened up a bit and started playing a little bit of football. Actual goal you scored, Tom. Lovely. That second that went splied in the corner of the net there. You looked as though you placed that one, or was it just a lucky shot? No, I placed it. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> placed it. Absolutely well, he didn't place it. <laughs> and then I ran away on for my life. <laughs> Good yeah. response from the crowd tonight, wasn't it? Yeah, it was brilliant. I must admit, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed scoring in front of him. Um, it's nice to hear him chanting your name as well, isn't it, now and again? <laughs> yeah, because yeah, you're not known as a prolific goal scorer, all right? No, I've only got two this season, so um, I'm quite happy to get that one. That's right, because we, we was concerned about that we haven't got goal scorers, yeah. but then someone like yourself just pops up and puts one in. Well, that might be, hopefully, that's the one that keeps us up. So, um, hopefully, that's the way you remember me. Right. <laughs> Man of the match, well deserved. 
man of the match, Tom Cowens, and well deserved, we all think. Thank Cheers, you. Tom. Cheers. Right, we've just managed to cop Scott McLeish here. Well, it's nice to have our own players' views, but it's also nice to get something from an opposing team. So, Scott, you've had a bit of an association with Cambridge over the years. We, we, you know, we've nearly had you here on and off. How are you feeling about tonight's situation? Obviously, I'm delighted to score. Hopefully, it's quietened a few of your fans. Well, well, uh, me, me, me and Dodger knew you was going to score. You know that before we got on the pitch. I mean, only a certain few who don't like me. Like, <laughs> 3,000 behind the goal. <laughs> um, I don't know, just got to keep going in high scoring. You never know one day. What, what, would you have liked to have come to Cambridge, do you reckon? I would love to have come a couple of years ago when Butts and Benjamin were here and there was talk of it every week. But uh, powers that be uh, never allowed it or whatever. There weren't enough money offered or they were asking too much, whatever way you want to put it, I don't know. Are you staying out with Colchester now for the next season? Yeah, I've got two years at Colchester and uh, hopefully I'm going to score plenty of goals and hopefully they're getting to Cambridge as well. <laughs> Well, we will certainly be seeing you next season, Scott. Thanks for your time. No problem. Excellent stuff. Well, seeing as it's the end of the home games and the end of the season here at the Harris Suite, I thought I'd bring in Paul, who's a hard-working manager of the Harris Suite. How do you feel, Paul? Whether we win or lost, I think you'd have been elated tonight, wouldn't you? Just the fact that it's over for you? Yeah, it's, it's, it's nice to, to finish with a win, of course. Everybody's happy, so... Um, but, yeah, I'm relieved it's over. I reckon you'll fall into the cliches of these football players. Now, what do you really feel like now the game's over and all of this pandemonium and every game at home's finished? So I can't let you down. Over the moon. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So what happens now? What happens to Harry Sweet on a regular? I know he's busy with other functions and that. But what, what happens during the non-season? Well, as you said, we do, we do an awful lot of functions or and other related things. So uh, basically it's a, a chance for us to clean down, brush down, get the place looking right again, do the odd function and then start preparing all ready for next season. Is there a redevelopment going to affect what's happening in Harris Suite in the foreseeable future? Uh, initially, no. I mean, obviously, as new facilities come on board, then we will move into them and, and, and start using those as our catering areas. But initially, I don't see too much of a problem with the Harris Suite. So the, the Harris Suite is going to be the venue for the foreseeable future? Yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, for, for at least next season, I would see, and, and maybe on to, to the following season as well. So you're looking forward to when it all happens so you can move into all brand new premises and be flying away? Exactly. It'll be fantastic to have uh, facilities that I think both the fans and, and us as caterers deserve. Well, I'd like to thank you, Paul, on behalf of all the Cambridge fans for providing us with these facilities every home game. We do look after us. Thanks a lot, and I hope you have a good holiday. <laughs> We're at the Fans Forum at Cambridge United in the Harris Suite and I've got with me the one and only Mr John Beck, the new Cambridge manager and it's his first Fans Forum back at the club for 10 years. We've just had the first half of the uh, Fans Forum so we'll just speak to John to find out how, he, how it went. How do you think it went, John, so far? I think it was OK. I think we had some uh, good questions and uh, they was answered frankly. Um, some of the questions were a little bit technical and perhaps people didn't understand them. Um, but I got good vibes and uh, I hope I can uh, get some good results for the supporters because it is the supporters club and they own the club and we want to please them, we want to entertain them, we want to score goals and we want to be successful. So um, it was good and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll hold another one so that we can answer the questions that arise in the, in the next six months or three months, whenever you know the next one is. How do you feel since you've been here and settled in now, John? You've been here sort of, what, is it two months now? Yes, about two months. Yeah. There's that changeover period. Do you feel that the fans have warmed to the situation now? Or do you still feel that there's a little bit of a gap there trying to recover from the Roy McFarlane situation? Or do you feel that people are moving on? What, what have you felt from the room tonight? I think obviously there are some people that are still feeling, you know, sorry for Roy. And I certainly feel sorry for Roy. He's done a wonderful job here. Um, but the decision was made, and you know, we've got to look forward now. Um, I'm certainly very, very pleased to be back. I developed a, a very close and personal re re relationship with uh, the board of directors and the chairman and, and all the admin staff and the ground staff um, at the club. So I'm, uh, I'm really happy to be, to be back. I just hope that I can bring some success to the club. Um, Roy done a magnificent job in getting them promoted from the third to the second. And now the aim of the football club is to get from the second to the first. Um, our first target is though to retain second division football. Um, so let's hope we can achieve that. 
Um, I know there are a number of fans that uh, uh, are looking forward to retaining uh, second division football and have got behind the players and myself and I really would like to applaud those people that are behind us. Just uh, someone mentioned, a uh, question was asked of you, John, about your own contract, your own situation. It seems, there seems to be some perception that you've got a contract to the end of next season. Uh, that's come through newspapers or some media of some form because that's the general feeling, but it seems to have been put to the side tonight as though that may not be the case. Are you in a situation that, see how we go, you do the work, you'll get the job? Well, I think uh, we, we have uh, an understanding, myself, the chairman, the board of directors. I have been brought here to try and stop us going down. Um, and I think if uh, we were frank, everyone was frank and honest about the situation, had there been no change, I think it would have been uh, very probable that we would have gone down. So the decision was made. Um, we have changed a few things. We are um, hoping um, to get the players to look more committed. Uh, we have created a new organisation so that they have a team compactness, so that they regain their confidence. They were lacking confidence. I feel that we've achieved that to a certain level. Uh, as, as far as my personal situation is concerned, um, that is um, for me to discuss with the chairman and board of directors. Uh, I won't announce that publicly, and I think the chairman has already re reiterated that situation. Um, and if at the right time the chairman wants to come up with the facts about my contract, then that's up to him. But I will keep it behind closed doors for the moment. OK, John. What's... Uh the situation with David Priest at the moment because uh, th there seems to be if John Taylor's looking to come towards the end of his contract or towards the end of his playing days we had him on camera just a few days ago saying that he, he, he thinks he's going to be struggling to get another season out of himself so if you look to see where he's got to go in the training's capacity you've got David Priest there as well you've also got Shane Wesley is there not too many trainers around at the moment um, some would say yes, uh, I don't think so. Uh, we have a situation where it was pointed out to me that, um, um, that the players that were making the transition from youth team football to reserve and first team football have stood still. We've addressed that situation. David Priest has been specifically organised um, to bring the players back, the Chillingworths and the Tans and the Denbys, uh, to give them more technique work in the afternoon to develop their skills. We, they've always been given a package, uh, a fitness package, weight programs, diet programs, sprint programs. Um, and we feel now the opportunity is there with David Priest's input and his understanding and his supervision that we may well loan some of those players out to local non-league clubs and that will be the, f the final package for them to develop ultimately to try and get into the first team. So David Priest's role is to, is to take the youth team players that are too old for the youth team and just on the fringe of getting in the reserves in the first team and develop them as quickly as possible. When you took over the team, John, if you could have just magically, if money was no object, what would you have done with the team to have secured the Division 2 status as it wasn't secure at the time we took it over? Well, I think the, the first most important thing was, and I think it was common knowledge, that having sold Benjamin, having sold Abbey, having sold Butler, that they were not replaced. And in the striking department, we were woefully short. So if money was no object, I would have bought all three back. <laughs> <laughs> right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we've finished the fans forum and it's been an excellent evening and I've managed to call the chairman of Cambridge United, Mr Reg Smart, just to find out how he feels the night went because at the end of the day, they're the people that we've come to speak to and find out their point of views tonight about the club. So, Reg, how do you think it's gone tonight? I think it's gone very well. I think it's very, very healthy to get the fans' views and, po and points over. And I'm glad that uh, there were directors here and people from the uh, officials from the club that can could answer most of the questions that were put to them.
Would you please do the reception that John Beck got because it's perhaps the first time that he's been in the public domain as far as the fans are concerned? I was very pleased. Um, the, boy, the, the lad has a lot of fences to bend, he knows that. Um, and I think he's doing a great job at the moment. Um, unfortunately, he's, he's come in probably a bit late um, to try and pick up a side that's uh, fighting against relegation, but I'm sure that he will do his best and uh, I'm sure that the fans will see the benefit of bringing John Beck back. OK, we've, we've talked a lot about the redevelopment as well tonight. The second half was devoted purely to the redevelopment. How do you feel now? I mean, you've been with the club a long time, Rich. How do you feel that we're that close to the redevelopment? What's in it for you? What do you really feel about the whole project? It's very exciting, especially um, I've either been trying to relocate or redevelop this stadium for the last, not 15 years, 20 years in actual fact. And I think it's very exciting and uh, I can't wait for the first bulldozer or digger or mechanical appliance to move on to the allotment land. In fact, we're, we're, we're trying to go ahead of, trying to negotiate uh, to get on the allotments ahead of schedule purely because um, uh, it's no fault of the Cambridge City. The, the weather has put everybody behind, but we're hoping that they will compromise and let us go on to the allotments before they have completed their work or the schedule of work they need to do before they allow us to go on. But we're hoping that we can persuade them to let us go on sooner. And I'm very, very excited about this scheme. And I hope that the, the fans will support the scheme. And I also hope that um, they will get behind the scheme, actually support it in. Reg, over the years you, you get a lot of stick, you get a lot of support. What, what does it take to be a chairman of a football club these days? I think you have to be thick-skinned, you have to be prepared to work very, very hard. You have to believe in something and uh, I, I would say that uh, the chairman that I've um, uh, served under while I've been a director at Cambridge United and before I became chairman all believed in one cause and that is to strengthen Cambridge United and uh, basically uh, people forget I was here before we went into the league and that them days it was a strong belief that we should be in the league and we achieved it my belief is that we should be in the first division I think we should achieve it the managers um, dream is to go into the premier division it will be nice for one year but whether we could maintain it I don't know <laughs> It would be an exciting occasion just for the one season, Reg, definitely. What, uh, when, the, when the old bits of the ground are pulled down, Reg, is there a certain bit that's personal and private to you that you'd like to sort of say, we're going to keep that little bit of, of stand or that bit of brick? Is there somewhere personal to you in the stand that you'd like to carry into the new stadium? I think there's lots of things in there. The, the, the terracing over the Habin, which I helped to pour in the, in the young, when my young days. There is also all the reinforcing that um, were coke griddles in actual fact, the old coke griddles from the gas board. Um, there are lots of things like that that um, I would like to keep, but um, uh, I'm afraid that I would probably need a yard as big as the common to keep the things that I would like to keep. <laughs> is there many more years left for Reg as chairman of Cambridge United? Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I've always said that um, um, the door's always open. If there is somebody that wants to come and invest a lot of money in Cambridge United for the benefit of Cambridge United, uh, and it meant that I had to stand down, um, I would stand down. Uh, I've always said that and always will maintain that. At this moment in time, um, I don't see many out there want to take my job at the moment. Uh, we had, uh, we put the club up for sale, as everybody knows. We had um, uh, two lots of people that were interested. One uh, uh, were based in Bermuda, which wanted to build houses on the site. Um, one was uh, a, a guy that wanted to come in and sell all our assets. Uh, that was how he was gonna get his money back. Um, while I'm chairman, while I'm about, that won't happen. to catch up with new sponsors Quicksilver as they came here to the Abbey last Thursday in a specialised press conference. 
bit about Quicksilver. Quicksilver Messenger Service has been an established London-based courier company since 1979. In October 1999, we acquired Alpha Express Couriers in Cambridgeshire as part of our plan to improve national coverage. The last 18 months have been spent developing our relationships with Alpha's long-standing customers and building a solid foundation to drive the business into the future. From shop floor to management, the company has a love of football, with many different teams supported and many different opinions aired. The company has been involved in the sponsorship of youth football in Surrey for many years, and indeed in Cambridgeshire, as we are the current sponsors of Milton FC. Recently this season, we undertook sponsorship of the match against Oxford United, where we invited customers and staff to enjoy the evening with us. The night was not only a great success for the team, but also for Quicksilver. This planted the seed in our minds about further developing our involvement with the club. This has now blossomed into our commitment to provide home shirt sponsorship to Cambridge United for the next two seasons. Yeah, tracking. <laughs> I was four times a day. 